Here's what you missed on the Sully Baseball Daily Podcast. Uh, very sadly, a member, a real legendary member of the Red Sox died the other day. Died, and I didn't know about this until today. And if there's anybody who could be a legendary member of the franchise that I grew up loving and is still my favorite team, who was never a manager, never a coach, never a player, never a general manager, it's Dick Brashani. Dick Brashani has been involved with the Boston Red Sox for as long as I've been alive. He has been, he started working with them in 1972. I was born in 1972. And Dick Brashani was the statistician. He was the publicist. He was the historian. And he worked under Tom Yorkey and, and Gene Yorkey and John Harrington and John Harrington, all the years, the Brashani has been a part of the team. And in uh, Nick Cafardo's uh, article about him in the Boston Globe, I'm going to read a little part of that. Uh, he said, he oversaw nominations for the National Tony Caniliaro Award and oversaw Red Sox inductees into the Baseball Hall of Fame, promoting the candidacies of prominent Red Sox players, including Jim Rice and Carlton Fisk. In 2006, Brashani was elected to the Red Sox Hall of Fame. He was also inducted to the UMass Athletic Hall of Fame. And he was someone who was an omnipresent figure for the Red Sox and did many, many wonderful things for the Red Sox over the years and was a beloved member of the organization. But there's also a connection, a direct connection, between Mr. Brashani, and that's what I will call him. I won't call him Dick Brashani. He is Mr. Brashani. And there's a reason why he's Mr. Brashani to your pal Sully. And there's a direct link to the Brashani family and the podcast that you are currently listening to now. And I talk about this in a blog post I'm going to put up on sullybaseball.com that I wrote back in 2011. But I'm going to talk about it again. I went to the country school in Weston, Massachusetts. That's where I went to elementary school, in a suburb of Boston. And when I was in the first grade, I liked baseball, but I watched it kind of like a kid would watch baseball. I watched it as, you know, it was something on TV. I had a favorite player, Butch Hobson. He was my favorite player because his name was Butch. And I would sit, I would watch baseball games with my grandfather. I would watch baseball games with my mom and dad. I would watch baseball games with Peggy and Rico Bianchi, who were our neighbors who had a lot to do with our upbringing. But I didn't quite, I mean, I liked watching them hit the ball and run around, but I didn't understand a lot of the game yet. I would get baseball cards, but I was... I didn't know what the numbers on the back meant. I just like looking at the pictures and then turning it over and trying to figure out how many teams a certain player played for. When I went into first grade at the country school in Weston, Massachusetts, my teacher was Mrs. Brashani. You'll forgive me, I never knew her first name. Back then, teachers were Mrs. or Miss or Mr. or whatever their last name was. Mrs. Brashani was the wife of Dick Brashani. And on the first day of first grade, we had to draw a picture of something we had done over the summer. It was, you know, the summer vacation ended, you know, after kindergarten. And this was the summer of 1978. And blissfully, I did not know what was happening with the Red Sox falling apart to the New York Yankees because I did not know anything about pennant races then. And a lot of kids were drawing pictures of their favorite shows or Star Wars had come out the year before and everything. I was drawing a picture of Yankee Stadium. And the reason I was drawing a picture of Yankee Stadium is because my Aunt Mary and Uncle Marty took me to a Yankee game, took me and my brother Ted to a Yankee game that summer. And so I drew a picture of Yankee Stadium because Yankee Stadium really made an impression on me. I still was blown away by it. You know, I always loved going to Yankee Stadium. And I tried my best to draw the monuments and all around it. And Mrs. Brashani took a look at it and said, do you like baseball? And I said, yeah, I do. And she told me, 
My husband works for the Red Sox. I thought she meant he was a player. And he said, no, he's the statistician of the Red Sox. And I didn't know what that meant. He said, he keeps score. Keeping score. And so through Mrs. Brashani in the first grade, I learned how to keep score. So I was, well, how the 1978, so I was six and eventually seven years old in the first grade. And I was a six and seven year old kid who would keep score. And I would, even like kids were playing kickball, I would try to keep score. I had my little handheld baseball game, Digital Diamond, and I would keep score playing that. And I would bring in a baseball card and I would ask her, what does this number mean? And she told me what a batting average was. And she told me what home runs meant. She told me what hits meant. She told me what runs meant. She told me what runs batted in meant. She told me what batting averages meant and earn run average and why some pitchers get a win and why some pitchers get a save. Now, of course, there was no advanced metrics back then. This was 1978, so no one knew anything about OPS or WAR or BABIP or anything like that. These were the basic numbers that are on the back of the card. And suddenly that big pile of baseball cards became more than just a photograph and a list of teams with a bunch of incomprehensible numbers. Suddenly those numbers made sense. Suddenly I could look on the back of a baseball card and figure out by myself if a player was good or not. I could look on the back, and I could look at the back of the card of Ralph Gar, or I could look in the back of, of Bobby Mercer, or Jeff Burroughs, or Mickey Rivers, or John Stearns, or you know, any other player, you know, Juan Beniquez, any other player who keeps popping up in the pack of baseball cards I would get, and I'd be able to figure out this player's better than that. Davy Lopes is better than Ted Sizemore. And I could figure that out. And it was like unlocking. It was like the Annie Dakota ring in A Christmas Story. I, I was able to unlock this code. And suddenly I became, through Mrs. Brashani and what she taught me. She taught me about reading comprehension, you know, reading, ABC, spelling, and all the other stuff you learn in the first grade. But she also taught me how to follow baseball. And by 1979, this is, I, first grade started in September of 1978 for me. In 19, when the 1979 season began, that's when my real baseball knowledge began. That's when I started following the games. That's when I started watching and reading the box scores and looking at the standings. And I remember the ups and downs of that season and understanding why 3,000 hits and 400 home runs was so significant for Carl Yastrzemski. That's why I remember that World Series in 1979, the We Are Family World Series. That's why I remember Freddie Lynn. I remember when Bob Watson came over to the Red Sox in a trade with the Houston Astros. I understood what a relief pitcher was. I understood what a starting rotation was. I understood why certain players batted at certain points in the lineup. Now, I didn't understand all the intricacies of the game because, do you know what? I was freaking seven. But do you know what? I also began the real love of baseball. And from that moment, from that seed planted in my brain, when I drew that picture of Yankee Stadium and Mrs. Prashani took the time to get to know me a little bit, from that came Sully Baseball. From that came an insatiable love of this game that goes on year round. From that moment, I started becoming a fan, not just of the Red Sox, but of the whole game. That I could appreciate the Pirates or the Phillies or later on teams like the Brewers or the Orioles and, and really appreciate 
how good it is to watch good baseball and what it means. And I've never stopped. Not from then. There was a little tiny ebb maybe in the mid-'80s where I wasn't following it as much, and then the Red Sox got good again. And then I just, it was just, but even that ebb, an ebb for me <laughs> was, would be anyone else being a maniacal fan. You know, the tiny ebb when Return of the Jedi and Indiana Jones and Ghostbusters came out, I was focusing a little more on that. But I could still tell you who all the players were. I could still tell you who all the lineups were. So I guess it's, it's, all, it's all comparative. So I don't know. I hope Mr. Bashani is still with us. But when I saw Dick Bershani die, I felt a little sad because that is a link to the beginning of this great love that I have. Now, one thing I am very grateful for is that my friend Mo Rocca, who I knew from my days as a producer on The Daily Show with Jon Stewart, And Mo also makes a very funny cameo in the movie I directed, I'll Believe You. And he's a wonderful, wonderful guy. And he's done many, many fabulous interviews for for CBS. And he did a piece with Dick Bershani at Fenway Park. And I sent Mo a message saying, tell Dick Bershani that his wife got me hooked on baseball. And Mo passed that message along, and apparently he laughed and was really touched. So at least he knew. At least he knew. There's a new podcast every day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, unless there's a leap year, and then we're going to do another one. Catch us on iTunes, SoundCloud, or follow us on Twitter at Sully Baseball. I'm your host, Paul Francis Sullivan. Please call me Sully.